Hi guys, Zaggy here, and welcome back to episode 3 of our core multiplayer tutorial. Now, if you haven't seen any of the previous tutorials, I really highly recommend you do. There'll be links in the description below, or you can just go ahead and click my channel, scroll down, and you should find them. They have the same thumbnail, they're just different numbers and whatnot. And anyway guys, this is episode 3, and then in today's episode, we are going to be adding polish to the game, and we are going to add some game feel, which I personally think is a big, important factor in making a game. What I'm also going to mention is this video is sponsored by Core, so go ahead and download the Core engine with the link in the description below. As per usual guys, Core is a really awesome program where you can start your game dev journey and it's really beginner friendly, which is why I recommend it to all of you guys because I know a lot of people who watch me want to get into game development but don't know where to start and personally I think Core is the best way you can start and ease yourself into the game development community. So anyway guys, today we're going to be adding post processing, effects, decals, stuff like that just to polish the game game. And in all honesty, personally, I feel like polishing is a really important factor in any game because it's what makes it stand out and it's what actually makes it look like a finished game. Games that lack polish and game feel, people won't want to play those. And trust me when I say this, I want feedback from my game, I want it to look nice, I want it to feel nice, which is what we're going to be doing today. And another thing I should mention is, this video isn't going to be as much of a tutorial, I'm just going to be showing you ways that you can make your game feel nicer and the ways that you can polish your games. But the way you do it is going to be completely up to you, I'm just going to show you some different methods. So without further ado, let's begin. So the first method that I would actually polish any game is by adding as many audio sounds as I can, because feedback from your game is really important. When you hit someone, for example, with a bullet, you want feedback from that player in terms of sounds. Now, Core already did that, in all honesty. My weapon that we created in the previous episode ha already has sounds, so I don't have to worry about player sounds and stuff like that. But what I can worry about is, for example, game sounds, like music and stuff. So what I can do is I can go into this audio tab and look for certain sounds and stuff that I wanna add. So it's really simple, you can press this little plus button, and that's going to show you a bunch of categories and you can just click on them, some ambience, background stuff and then there is even more kind of categories such as fantasy, industrial, military, nature and stuff like that. But in my case I'm just going to be looking for music to have in the background and I know deathmatch games and shooter games shouldn't really have music in the background because you want to hear the players but you know I want mine to kind of sound epic so let's for example add this colossal boss fight in. Now what you'll notice is this colossal boss fight has this sort of range on it so what we can do is we can go down here and we can select this radius and we can just uh, increase this radius if we want and basically what this means is this music is going to play from this radius so when we're in this radius it's going to be the loudest basically so i can set mine like that i can play around with this stuff like how pitchy it is if it repeats and stuff and typically what i would say is i would have your song on autoplay and on repeat is so that when it does reach the end it does repeat and there is something still in the background but you know you go ahead and play around with that all right so i've ended up adding this colossal boss fight music and basically it's all in the map and the really cool thing that core allows you to do is basically when you're inside a building you will hear the music less and stuff like that so i think that's pretty awesome but yeah you can add how many other sounds and stuff you want and that is completely up to you so from sounds what other things can you add to make your game feel better and to polish it so decals is something that core offers you and i'll explain those in a minute but not gonna lie it's one of the most favorite things of mine in core and basically it's cool little effects and stuff you can add to your environment. So I can click on this decal stuff and I can add a bunch of the stuff that I want. So for example, let's add this patch of moss. I can drag it down and you can see it right there like so. And same thing with any sort of sand patches. I can add like letters, which isn't going to be relevant to me, but I can add like vines and stuff like that. And I think that's something really awesome that you can go ahead and add to your stuff. And it's one of my favorite things that Core actually offers you. The stains and stuff that you can just add on the ground that just make it look a little bit different. Because players want something, one variety, they want the map to look finished. And even though we have a lot going on in my map, we can add more to it to basically make it nicer. And the amount of decals you add is completely up to you. For example, maybe you want some ivy there, maybe you want it, you know, add whatever you want and the cool thing is is it wraps around stuff and it's all automatic so you don't have to play around with any of that stuff if you know what i mean but basically like i can just add this to my roof if i want or whatever you know it's completely up to you play around with it and yeah that's a really cool other thing that you can do in core 
So another thing that you can do is add effects. Now in my map, I'm not gonna be adding effects because I don't really have anything that I can add effects to, but basically, here you will have different tabs such as character, environment, explosion, items, magic, AOE, beams, cast, and so on and so on. And you can add all these effects to different things. So the thing that I like to add is, in my previous core game I had lanterns. Um, you will see this on the screen right now. I added some candle particles to it, or fire particles, to make it, like the ca to make it look like the candle is actually, you know, lit. So I think that's pretty cool. You can also add sparkles and stuff like that. And once again, it doesn't really fit my map and it won't matter that much in my map because there's nothing that you can really do with that. But other than that, you can add these. Now, just gonna point out, I already have some effects in this map because my gun will spawn particles when it shoots a bullet or when I get hit and stuff. So we already did that last episode, guys, so that's okay. So particles, you can add them, which is really awesome. And once again, you can just drag them in with no problem like so, you know, just drag in like so, that's a puff of smoke, which in fact would probably fit quite nicely in my um, map. I can probably put it down here like so. So when you go into it, you know, you might not see as much. So that's basically the effects tab. So let's move on to the next part of this polish thing. Okay, so you can see that the map is a lot brighter now, and that's because I've disabled a post-process thing that I added earlier, so apologies about that. But you can click on this post-processing tab, and basically in here you, you will have different effects that you can add to your map. And I recommend you add at least one of them. I recommend you color grade your map or you add bloom. And if you don't know what post-processing is, it's just effects that you can add to your game that make it look a little bit different. So one thing that I would probably add is some color grading, and there's this one called color grading post-process. Drag that in and you can play around with it. So you can set the tint of your map to maybe like an orange to make it seem like it's, you know, a sunset or something. And I think it's something that really makes the map and the game just look a lot nicer. So I'm gonna add that actually, cause I think that looks quite nice. Also, something that I always add is bloom. Now, personally, in my map, I don't have any bright objects, so the bloom isn't going to affect me as much. But basically, for those wondering what bloom is, it basically just adds a glow to your bright colours. Now, my colours are very neutral, so it's not going to really work, but you can add that in. And just to kind of clarify, when you've got your thing added, you can go to the right into the properties and you can play around with it, which is pretty awesome. So you can add, change the gain, the contrast, saturation, tint, temperature, and all that shazam in there. Also, you can add stuff to the camera. You can add like camera post-processing, which I think is pretty cool. And you can also add full screen effects and scene effects, and you can, you know, just search through those. Another thing that you can play around with is the sky, which I never really mentioned in any of the videos, I think. So they have some pre-made ones you can add, for example, this uh, sky cape carnival. So if I drag that in, I will have now, you see this sky. I don't really want that because I already have this basic one, which works for me. But you can set it, for example, to night and stuff like that. Obviously, it doesn't really fit my theme, but once again, it might, you know, suit your game. I don't know. Anyway, you can also add stuff like a moon, a nebula, a planet, and stuff like that. And you see, I can just drag that in and play around with where that's going to sit. And you can see it there in the background, just like so. We can also add a bunch of this stuff, like a star a dome, a skylight, and basically I just recommend you play around with it and see what fits your game, because as I said, it's completely up to you what you add to your game to polish it. But that's another thing that I would recommend, is these small little details, just as even the sky, have a sky, because if it's just, you know, plain, no one's gonna like that. So you might think that is it, but there is a couple new things that you can add. UI textures is probably one of those, and basically what this does is you're going to add stuff to your UI. So maybe I want, I don't know, a banner on my UI, so I can have a banner underneath this. But you know, it's completely up to you where you want stuff and, every, and if you want it. Personally, I don't really want it in my game because it doesn't fit what I'm making, but if you are making some sort of adventure game, you might want some icons and stuff. And the cool thing is that Core already has this and you can play around with it. So that's probably another thing that you can add to make your game better in that way. And other than that, you can add stuff like lighting effects, which is another thing that polishes your game. Just adding some point lights in places that will be the brightest is probably a nice idea. Even this point light here just looks nice and it makes the scene look a little bit different. 
as you can see right there. And once again, you can play around with the uh, with the brightness and with the color, for example, if you want it to be more white, if you want it to be more yellow and stuff, you can play around with that. Same with intensity. Um, spotlight is more of a, you know, spotlight, of course, so the light's a little bit different. And then area light will just shine on an area, as I said. But yeah, just these small little things make the difference. And for example, if you have torches in your game, as I said before, add a flame, but also add a light. So it actually reflects the light source and stuff like that. But yeah, guys, that's basically it for today's tutorial. It wasn't really a tutorial. It was more of me showing you how you can polish a game because I don't think there's a way that I can kind of show you what to do exactly because that's going to be completely up to you but hopefully after this video you have some understanding of how you can add post-processing and how you can polish your game and add game feel so in the next episode we are going to be doing a lot of play testing which is also really important so stick around for that and if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe comment down below if you have any suggestions for future videos or if you need any help hit that thumbs up button i didn't know what to say a minute ago and also download core cool. there's a link in the description below or you can go to corgames.com and yeah thank you core cool for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for watching it and also a big thank you to my patreons noob nicole dan smoking vita and yan you guys you mean everything to me you support me so much so thank you so much for that and i'll see you guys later bye